Thanks for joining us on 9 News Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. More than 12,000 people are dead in Turkey and in Syria following a a massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake that struck on Monday morning that has left behind devastation across a wide swath of both of those countries. David Shelley, a seismologist from the U.S. Geological Survey based in Golden, joins us now for a bit more about the horrific earthquake and how this happened. Um, First of all, David, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Obviously, this was a massive earthquake. Could you put into context just how big a magnitude 7.8 earthquake actually is? Yeah, I mean, this is a very large earthquake with powerful shaking and... A magnitude 7.8 earthquake, you know, this is not the biggest magnitude that we see, but what made this earthquake particularly impactful was this was a, a fault that was rupturing up to the surface um, close to the buildings, and this is, you know, rupturing through a very highly populated area. And not only that, was the magnitude 7.8 earthquake was followed about nine hours later by another very powerful earthquake, magnitude 7.5 event that was about 60 miles to the north. So two major earthquakes in the span of about nine hours and a fault line that got was very close to the surface. And before I get into fault lines, and maybe for some of our audience who may not know what exactly an earthquake is and how it happens, can you, could you just explain how an earthquake happens? You mentioned those fault lines. Yeah, so the, the surface of the earth, the top outermost layer of the earth is composed of uh, numerous what we call tectonic plates. If you've ever been out on a frozen lake, um, you might notice sometimes that the ice is moving different ways and creating cracks. And um, sometimes you may even hear pops from those cracks on the lake. It's not too different with the, the, with the earth. Um, these tectonic plates are moving relative to each other and um, they build up stress over time. And then Occasionally, that stress is released very suddenly in an earthquake. So that is the two sides of the fault are slipping relative relative to each other. And when that happens, it generates um, powerful waves that emanate out from the location of where the earthquake happened and can impact people in a relatively wide area. What fault lines are the ones that Turkey and Syria sit on that caused this particular quake? And are they known for producing these types of earthquakes? Yeah, so this region is the junction of three significant tectonic plates. And the the two earthquakes um, that happened on Monday occurred on or near the what's called the East Anatolian Fault Zone. So this is this is a major fault that is the boundary between um, two of these tectonic plates. And so this was a known hazard, but still these um, these earthquakes are large and they don't happen very often, you know, at least on a given on a given fault. Are there, you mentioned at the start of this that this earthquake kind of butted up right against the surface, and correct me if I'm wrong in how I'm saying this, but I guess the basic question I have is, are there different types of earthquakes? And if so, what type of earthquake was this one? Was it more likely or less likely to produce the damage that it did? Yeah, so this this type of earthquake is what we um, call a strike-slip earthquake. And so that means that we have two tectonic plates that are moving horizontally relative to each other. There are other plate boundaries that are what we call subduction zones, where we have one plate that is diving underneath another plate. Um, And those types of faults um, are the kinds that generate the very largest earthquakes. Yet those earthquakes tend to be deeper and often farther from population centers, so they may not generate um, as strong a shaking in cities as we saw with this strike-slip earthquake. If this earthquake were to take place in the U.S., uh, I kind of want to localize this a little bit for our American audience. Um, what what sort of damage were this to produce? Let's say this took place in in Seattle or in San Francisco or in L.A. Um, and are we able to see earthquakes this strong here in America? Yeah, in fact, um, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake was a similar earthquake in some ways. That was a magnitude 7.9 earthquake. Um, that ruptured the San Andreas Fault in Northern California. Um, of course, there weren't nearly as many people living in California in 1906 as there are today. Um, so, if that type of an earthquake happened again, it would be it would be quite devastating. Um, the 
you know, the devastation that we see in an earthquake is a combination of the, the strength of the shaking. Um, so we know we would see strong shaking. But the thing, you know, that we as a society can do about it is to make the buildings strong and resilient. So it's that shaking combined with um, buildings, you know, in the case of the, the Turkey events, the buildings were um, vulnerable to shaking. So we need to make sure that we're doing a good job in, in the U.S. to make sure our buildings are, are resilient to, to shaking. And David, a little context, of course, on top of this, I'm sure so you, you already know, but uh, in Syria, of course, an ongoing decade-long civil war, a lot of displaced persons there, and essentially a failed state in northern Syria. So uh, building codes are obviously uh, not top of mind in some of those areas that have been enduring the civil war, which uh, I'm sure contributed to some of this. Um, David, you also mentioned that nine hours after the 7.8 initial earthquake, there was the 7.5 um, quake as well. Was that an aftershock and are aftershocks still continuing in the affected areas? Yes, that, that earthquake can be considered an aftershock. You know, uh, an aftershock is just a convenient term that um, scientists use to describe the clustering in space and time of earthquakes. But whether it's an aftershock or not, it's, you know, it's a very large earthquake in its own right. Um, and yes, aftershocks are continuing. Um, the most likely scenario is that aftershocks will continue to decrease in size and frequency as time goes along, but there's still a chance that there could be another you know, damaging earthquake as part of this sequence. And waves, you mentioned the waves that are underneath some of these quakes. Uh, do they reverberate around the globe? And do they, for example, go underneath the surface of the earth here in Colorado and America? Yeah, so we have seismometers installed you know, throughout the U.S. And with those sensitive types of instruments, you can see the waves from these large distant earthquakes. Um, and even you could see the waves from, you know, many of these smaller aftershocks um, that are continuing to occur. So they're very weak. People are not going to feel them um, in the United States, but we can detect them with uh, sensitive instruments. It's uh, certainly... Uh, stunning to be able to feel it. Uh, I guess my final big question for you, in terms of the size of this earthquake for Turkey, you mentioned that this is an exceptionally large earthquake. When was the last time that Ur Turkey ever, or, or or this region, uh, Turkey, Syria, I know it was right on the border where this uh, earthquake uh, took place. Um, when was the last time they saw an earthquake this large? So this particular fault zone is known to have had large earthquakes in the 1800s. Um, in more recent times, there in the northern part of Turkey, there's the North Anatolian fault zone that experienced a magnitude 7.6 and a 7.2 earthquake as recently as 1999. Um, so this is just a very highly seismically active area. Okay. I guess my final main question I've got for you, David, is I did see some rumblings on the internet about people who said that they foresaw this coming days in advance. Is there any known um trusted way to predict an earthquake or is it as random as it gets so scientists have been trying for a long time to predict earthquakes but so far there has been no uh accepted technique to do so essentially as far as we know now earthquakes are unpredictable and the best we can do is to prepare ahead of time um, for the shaking that we know will happen eventually absolutely um any final things to add about this Devastated magnitude, 7.8 um, earthquake that struck Turkey and Syria? Um, where, you know, I think, you know, just from a human standpoint, we see the the suffering that, that's happening there. And, you know, we want to do as much as we can to um, help uh, prevent these types of disasters in the future. Absolutely. No doubt about it. But uh, David, uh, David Shelley, a seismologist from the U.S. Geological Survey based in Golden. Uh, thank you for taking a few minutes of your time and joining us here on 90s Plus and lending us some of your expertise and insight about this uh, devastating earthquake. We certainly appreciate a few minutes of your time here, David. Thanks for having me.